Seth Pearl together. And in this week's video, we're going to be talking about how you're going to create the thumb gusset for your mitts and how you're going to separate these stitches to knit the thumb later. So we're going to get right into that in a few minutes. But first, I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to several new patrons that have joined uh, the Pearl Together patron family in the last couple of weeks. So that's pretty exciting. Thank you so much to Lee, Sharon, Julie, Elaine, and Linda. That's amazing. And we appreciate your support. This is patronage is how we keep these videos coming to you consistently, mostly on a weekly basis. Sometimes it's 10 days or two weeks between videos, depending on what all's going on. So today's video is going to last you until you're through the top of the mitts. Then next time when I'm back from my Pearl Together retreat in Ogden, I'll show you how to pick up the stitches for the thumb uh, mitigate any little gaps you might have right here. And then we're going to continue to bind off and, and then we'll finish up. So thank you so much for becoming patrons. If you want to see what I'm offering for your monthly pledge, head over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together and you can check that out. It includes discounts on events like the retreat I'm headed off to this week, as well as patron only content. We have knit nights, that's fun. Over Zoom, we all get together and knit together. You can ask questions. Anyway, super fun. Head over there and check it out. Okay, let's get started with doing the increases. Now, I'm going to show you specifically how I like to do the make one right and make one left. They lean different directions, and you'll see why. Let's get started. All right, so I've knitted 40 rows of the ribbing, and now I'm ready to begin the left thumb increases at the top of page five. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and do as instructed and knit the first three stitches and purl the next two so that I'm keeping in ribbing. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to choose to do the make one increases so that we can start increasing for the thumb gusset. Okay, so there's the first five stitches, knit three, purl two. Now make one right. When I see that instruction, usually what that's going to mean is that a, I, I call it a lifted bar increase where you're going to look at the strand between the two stitches. So in my case, it's that pink strand right there. And we're going to make one by going with our left needle going in from the back. And that's going to make it lean to the right. And you can tell that because the strand that's going across the needle here is, is slanted to the right. The top portion slanted to the right. So then, but if I knit right into that the way it is, it's going to leave a little hole. And I don't like that. And so we have some kitty interference here. So we're going to knit into the front of it so that we create a twist. You can try to fit your needle in like this to the front, but I really like to go take my needle into the back and then kind of work my needle around so that the right hand needle is providing a little slack. Then I press with my index finger to keep that loop slackened. Then I go in from the front. I split that stitch just a hair though. So let me show you that again. I go in from the back. I rotate my needles around together pull that forward, and then I hold the slack that I've created with my left index finger, and then I knit right into that. So that creates that twist, which will close whatever hole might have occurred. And then I'm just going to place my marker, as indicated there. These are some cool little markers I'll show you in just a second. And then I'm going to carry on with the ribbing as established to the end of the round. So check out these little markers. These are from Monster Stitches and they're awesome. I like them because they're small, they're really thin, they look good with my project, and I'm just easily entertained by these things. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and knit all the way around, keeping in our ribbing pattern there. We have increased one stitch. The other thing I wanna say while I'm knitting my way around here is the make one right and make one left increases um, are pretty standard. I do have a, a slower tutorial video on that that I'll put a link down below in the video description and also um, I'll have a link in the upper right hand corner of this window right now. But I, I will show you again here in just a moment. We're going to have a plain, after I finish this row, we're going to have a plain round and we will alternate an increased row with a plain round 
until we get to the prescribed number of total stitches for the thumb gusset. So you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. All right, so I've just completed round one at the top of page five. Now we're gonna do round two where we're gonna knit, the, knit and purl the first five stitches as we have been, just keeping in pattern there. And when we come to the stitch that we just made, we are going to keep in pattern. So that's gonna be a knit because we've done our three, two, you know, our sequence from before, and this is gonna become a knit stitch. Slip the marker and carry on all the way around until we do our next increase. Now I'm on round three and we're continuing in our rib pattern until we get right up to the marker. Then we're going to lift the strand that's between the two needles there. And we're gonna go in from the back with our left needle. We go in from the back. I went ahead and lifted it with the right needle because that seems easier, but I'm gonna take the left needle in from the back. So it should look like this, and it looks like a stitch that's not mounted correctly, and that would be true. So what we wanna do now is take our right needle and go in from the front and knit into the front of that stitch, which will twist it and close any small, small hole. Now I went ahead and I was able to get in there. If you have trouble getting in from the front, especially when you have a marker in the way, go ahead and rotate, go in from the bottom here, rotate your needles around inside that stitch. Then you can pull a little bit forward on this right needle, press with your left index finger in the back so you're leaving some slack there. Then you should be able to knit into that much more easily. All right, there's our make one, and I split that stitch, so I'm gonna do that again, being careful. Okay, there's our make one, and then we're just gonna continue around, and alternating an increasing round with a plain round. And you're gonna do that until you have the number of stitches between your beginning of the round and your marker as called for by the pattern. So that's going to be for the left thumb increases. The reason for that is if you look on page, at the bottom of page four, you'll see the uh, photo. And so this is my left, let me zoom out a little bit. This is my left hand. And I'm going to be widening this out and having the gusset go across my hand like this. So that's gonna look pretty cool. Check out the bottom of page four, you'll see what I mean. All right, I'm gonna work at this for a little bit and then I'll be back to show you what it looks like and then we will I'll show you the thumb gusset increases going the other direction for the right hand. Okay. I'm in the middle of page five and what I have here is completed all of my increases so you can see how this is going to work this is my left thumb here so we're just going to follow the next instructions which is continuing across the rib until we get to this marker and then we're going to remove the marker and put some stitches on waist yarn to hold for the thumb. And then we're just going to continue knitting in the round to the height that you want for your mitt. All right, I've continued over to where my thumb marker was and I removed that. Now I'm just going to put the next 20 stitches for me for the largest size I'm knitting. I'm putting the next 20 stitches on my waist yarn here. So I've just got a scrap of worsted weight is all, and there I almost dropped that stitch because I wasn't paying attention. I just have a scrap of worsted weight yarn that I'm slipping all the stitches purl-wise onto my darning or tapestry needle here. And I should be counting, but I know these are in groups of five for ribbing, so there's five, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and that's gonna just take me to the end of the needle for me. You may have a different number, so just refer to the pattern for however many you need to do. And I'm gonna smush all these over onto my waist yarn and take my needle out. So these stitches are going to be held in reserve for the thumb, so you can see how that's gonna work, because when we curl that around, you can even, you could even tie this together if you wanted to, to see how that's gonna be. You curl that around and you can see that that's gonna be the thumb. Now what we need to do is join back in the round, leaving these in reserve for the thumb. So I'm gonna just pull my magic loop through here and turn this over 
turn my work to the other side so I can continue knitting in the round, being careful to join here and snug that first stitch up nice and tight because we don't want to have any gaps. Now, you know, you can sew that up. If you end up with a little hole where the thumb join is, it's not that big of a deal, um, but it's preferable to avoid that. I'm just stuffing the my waist yarn ends down inside there so I can make a good join. So for me, I'm just gonna knit that first stitch and snug that up, but it's also super important to snug up the second and the third, get that a good tug, and then carry on with your ribbing all the way to back to the beginning of your round, which for me is this next needle junction, and that's where my tail is where I started, so that's how I know that. All right, meanwhile, I have the second cuff going here because I wanna show you how to do the right thumb increases so you don't want to actually knit two of the same. I mean, it's not too big of a crisis if you do, I suppose, because you could always turn it over. But the problem then is you wouldn't have the diagonal gusset on your palm. You'd have one of those gussets on the back side, which, I mean, functionally it would work, but it would look pretty silly. So let's do the right thumb increase. So on round one, you want to have you want to have this going the other direction, right? So you're going to continue in rib to the last seven stitches and then place your thumb marker there. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, last seven stitches, place my marker, and then we're going to make one left. So remember before when we were making one, let me zoom in a little bit here for you. Remember before when we were making one to the right, we'd go in from the back under that strand. And that was what caused that stitch to lean slightly to the right. So this time we're gonna go in from the front and you can see that that strand between, zoom in here for you, the strand right here between is leaning to the left. So that's how you can tell it's a left leaner. Now, if I just knit in right into that, we're gonna have a hole. So we're gonna knit into the back of that and twist it. Now, if you can't, if you can't get a hold of it going in the back, roll your needles around each other. That's a little tip just to make it easier and knit into the back of that. And then we're just gonna continue to the end of the round and we've increased one stitch. All right, turn your work and we're gonna start again at the beginning of the round. We're gonna continue in ribbing until we get to the marker. And on this one, we're just gonna slip the marker, knit our new stitch and continue because this is not an increasing round. So just as before, we're gonna alternate increasing round and a round where we just knit in pattern continuing the ribbing. So we're just alternating again, our increasing and our plain round. Plain meeting, continue in ribbing. Another thing to take notice of is this time we're slipping the marker before we make our increase. And if you have to set your work down and you're not sure where you are, um, you, can, you can easily see that this stitch right here is what we did the last round when we made our increase. You can tell we pulled up that bar and made that. That looks a little tight and it's gonna all even out as we knit this next round. So let me scoot this down on the cable so you can get a better look. What you can tell is now you can tell that there's the stitch that we lifted and we knit it into, and then the stitch on the cable is the one we just made. So we know that next time we come around, we're gonna slip the marker and make another increase. Okay, I'm gonna knit my way around and then I'm gonna show you the left increase, make one left. I'll show you that one more time. All right, so now I'm ready to do another make one left. And one thing to consider is that I have, in my pattern, I have three knits right here. So really the next increase should be a purl. And I probably should have made that a purl, but it's okay. It's okay, it will all work out. You can adjust that whenever you're ready. So to make one left, we're going to insert the needle from the front to the back and lift that, that strand that goes between our stitch columns. Lift that up and knit into the back of it. And again, if you can't get the back without splitting stitches, you can always come into the front, roll your needles around each other, and then you'll be in the back. So that's usually what I do when I have 
you know, when I'm trying to make keep things relatively tight. So there's my increase. And then I'm going to knit the next stitch and carry on in pattern. Okay, so you're gonna to continue to do this until you have the prescribed number of stitches between the thumb marker and the end of your round, just as we did before. All right, I'm gonna leave you with that this week. So you can continue with your increases on both sides and then go ahead and knit the, the hand part up as high as you want whether that's gonna be all the way to way up here so you can tuck your fingers in and make them warmer or maybe you prefer to have it like here so your gloves are a little uh, more functional but less covering, that's fine too, whatever you prefer. And then next week, we'll finish up. All right, I hope you found that helpful. So this week, while I'm away, work on knitting your right and left thumbs. Go ahead and start the second one. I have them both going at once. I do that with my socks sometimes too on different needles just to avoid the second sock syndrome, which I really don't have that much problem with. But sometimes it's fun to just have them done at the same time. Um, I've never not finished a pair, but still, if you have the needles, it is kind of fun to do them at the same time. But don't get confused between the left and right. So I've seen people do that and then it's a bummer because you got to rip it out. Anyway, so I'm headed off to Ogden, Utah. Watch my Instagram for fun stuff we'll be doing at the retreat and I hope you consider joining us next year it's a lot of fun so watch my Instagram and my stories and we're gonna have a blast and I'll catch up with you and we'll finish up our mitts after I get back at the first of the month